They're singing the hymn of praise, all hail the power of Jesus' name, number 549. We remain standing. name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all Crown him, ye martyrs of our God, who from his altar call. Extol the stem of Jesse's rod, and crown him, Lord of all. Extol the stem of Jesse's rod, and crown him, Lord of all. Ye seed of Israel's chosen race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him ye heirs of David's line whom David Lord did call. The God incarnate man divine and crown him Lord of all, the God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. Sinners whose love can ne'er forget the wormwood and the gall, Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall, we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all, we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, before the foundation of the world, you chose us in Christ to be your sons and daughters. Grant us to behold every human life as created, redeemed, and called to be your precious treasures, that we receive each neighbor as gift and privilege with whom we may rejoice as brothers and sisters 
in your everlasting kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for this morning's readings. On the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, our Old, reading, our Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 31b. I will show you a more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. But if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part when I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the hymn of acclamation. Number 735, have no fear, little flock. To give you the kingdom, have no fear, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. For the Father will keep you in his love forever. Have good cheer, little flock. Praise the Lord high above, praise the Lord high above, for he stoops down to heal you 
Uplift and restore you, praise the Lord high above. Thankful hearts raised to God, thankful hearts raised to God, for He stays close beside you in all things, works with you. Thankful hearts raised to God. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 4, verses 31 through 44. Jesus went down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! Ah, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. And when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we confess the words of our Christian faith found in the wording of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, in light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning, everyone. How, are, how is everyone today? Good. Good to see you. Thanks for coming up today. So I brought a couple things with me here today. Put this over here. All right. Well, I brought a 
ice cream bucket, right? What's the problem with this ice cream bucket? <laughs> right, it's empty, right? The problem with this ice cream bucket is that it is empty. But you can imagine, I like to use, have you use your imagination, can you imagine this ice cream bucket being full? Let me ask you this, what flavor would it be full of? Dylan. Vanilla? Vanilla? Okay, very good. Vanilla is a good one. Go ahead, Julia. Chocolate. Chocolate. What else? Strawberry. Strawberry. Um, vanilla. vanilla, too. Okay, so we got two for vanilla. Reed, do you have one? Mint? Very good. Devin. Mint, too. Okay. Vanilla. All right. So no cookies and cream? No rocky road? No German chocolate cake or bubble, uh, oh, yeah, German chocolate cake ice cream. No Superman ice cream. No bubblegum ice cream. All right, I'll stop. All right. Okay, so what I wanted you to think about this morning, thinking about if this is full, but not only one pail. Have you ever gone to an ice cream shop where there's like 30 of them? Yeah, right? And you go to the ice cream shop and you see behind the glass case there's like 30 pails of ice cream all on display, all for you to look at, and all for you to, well, I don't want to eat, choose, right? So you see like 30 pails of ice cream and your mom and dad says to you, pick one. One? Right, exactly. <laughs> pick one out of 30? Is that fair? I don't think so. Anyway, but maybe you say to your mom and dad, can I pick two? Can I have two favorites? And so then maybe you get one scoop of vanilla, one scoop of chocolate or strawberry or mint or whatever it is. You get a scoop of each because maybe you have two favorites. <laughs> so can we have more than one favorite is my question. And the answer is yes, especially as we think about ice cream. Yeah, we can have more than one favorite when it comes to all the different kinds. Today we are celebrating Sanctity of Life Sunday. We are celebrating the fact that God loves life. He loves life so much that He gives us life. He gives you life and you life and you, 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 gives all of us life. And so in that way, Jesus reminds us that He chooses us for life. Let me read a Bible verse here. Uh, in John 15, verse 16, Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. So, when it comes to choosing us, when it comes to giving us life, Jesus has more than one favorite. Actually, all of us are his favorite. Again, he says, I choose you, 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 and you to give life to, to have life enjoy life, to be blessed by life. As Jesus says these words, he says that I choose you. So Jesus, God is the one who creates us. Not only that, but is Jesus, God who's the one who forgives us, gives us eternal life. Jesus has come to choose us, to give us life, so that we might have life in him. So again, Jesus chooses all of us. He doesn't just choose those of us who are tall, he doesn't just choose those of us who are strong. He doesn't just choose those of us who are, who are pretty or skinny or popular or we could keep going on. Jesus loves all of us. He chooses every one of us because he loves us to give us life. Even me, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So Jesus loves all of us, chooses all of us because all of us are his favorite. Let me ask you guys one last question today. So if Jesus loves everyone, if everyone is Jesus' favorite, does that change the way we look at others? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because we know that, yeah, you're Jesus' favorite, and you're Jesus' favorite, and you're Jesus' favorite, and you're Jesus' favorite. It changes the way we look at others because we know how much Jesus loves them. And it all starts with by knowing how much Jesus loves us. Again, so Jesus gives us many colors, many flavors of ice cream. He makes us all different. 
But Jesus chooses each one of us because he loves us in his, in his doings. So let's close our time with a word of prayer this morning. Can we pray? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for choosing me and making me special. Help me see others as special because you chose them too. Amen. Before you head back this morning, I got a little coloring page for you here today. It reminds you that God has chosen you. Jesus says again in John 15, I chose you. There's two of them here. Yep. Jesus says, I have chose you. So as you color this, remember that Jesus has chosen you, that Jesus loves you, to give you life. All right. Very good. Our service this morning continues as we sing our sermon hymn, number 573, Lord, tis not that I did choose thee. mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. While it is not yet February, the month that includes Valentine's Day, and while it is not June, the month traditionally known for weddings, today's epistle reading is all about love. Describes the necessity of love, it describes the character of love, and it describes the permanence of love. Today's epistle reading from 1 Corinthians 13 is all about love. But what is love? The world in which we live would have us define it in a certain way. When it comes to love, the world would have us say, I love that. Or, I love the way you make me feel. Or simply, I love you. That is, as long as I get something back from you. 
with worldly love. Love does the easier thing. With worldly love, love chooses the life of self. But as we consider today's epistle reading, we find a different kind of love. We find a godly love. A love that does not serve self, but a love that serves others. A love that does not do the easier thing, but a love that does the harder thing. A love that does not choose the life of self, but a love that chooses the life of others. And the reason for today's text is because God's people in Corinth were struggling. They were struggling with divisions that were between them. They were struggling on how to live out their spiritual gifts. And they were struggling when it came to being the body of Christ. Things were kind of unraveling for them. Life, in a sense, was falling apart. And so in today's text, Paul says to them, you lack one thing. One thing that will address your divisions. One thing that will guide you and enable you to live out your spiritual gifts. One thing that will enable you to come together to be the body of Christ. And that one thing is love. Not a worldly love that chooses the life of self, but godly love that chooses the life of others. As we look at our world today, we might say that our world could use more godly love too. We might say it could use a huge dose of godly love. For while love is so frequently trumpeted today, true love is not. True love that chooses the life of others rather than choosing the life of self. So instead of 